Welcome back to the principles of training and today the principle we're going to talk about is the principle of choosing where you work and where you rest. In this episode we're going to talk about the principle of choose where you work and choose where you rest. In, previous, in a previous episode we talked about the don't go to bed angry principle or if you get them up get them down and for me when I'm getting them down or letting them rest letting them relax I'm always going to choose where I let them relax where I let them rest and so there's always some some work and there's some not work and many people don't realize this but the whole time you're riding your horse your horse is always carefully monitoring where do I have to work where do I not work and they memorize all that stuff and they see if there's any consistencies and if there's consistencies in where they rest and where they work they will tend to want to be in the place where they get to rest. You know, many people cause um, problem, behavioral problems with their horses just by not understanding this principle. You know, they take their horse for a trial ride and they go out there for a trial ride for three hours and they get back to the barn and they unsaddle the horse and put him away. And they do that repetitively and pretty soon, as soon as the horse turns around on that trial ride and starts coming back, He's like, let's go, let's go. I want to get home because that's where I get to rest. I'm looking forward to my rest. I'm excited about my rest. Or even horses on the trail that don't want to go out. The reason they want to go back to the barn is because that's where they get to rest. That's where they get to feel comfortable. You know, you get to see it like that with um, trail riding horses and stuff. But I've seen a lot of lessons over the years. Like stru You see a lot with structured lessons too. Um, I'm just going to trot around a circle right here and I will... I'll be, the you know, I'll be the student, but my voice will be the voice of the instructor. And you see a lot of, I've seen a lot of lessons over the years to where someone's trotting a circle. And right here the instructor goes, now, inside leg, inside leg, he's cutting in, inside leg, inside leg, inside leg, oh, very good. Okay, now, do a half halt, do a half halt, he's too fast, he's slowing down, oh, good, okay, now, he's running his shoulder out, outside rein, outside leg, outside rein, outside leg, oh, very good, that's excellent right there. And now, he's slowing down a bit, kick him, make him go, use the whip, go, go, oh, good, now he's going, but, oh, he's dropping his shoulder to the inside, straighten him up, straighten him up, inside leg, inside rein, inside leg, inside rein, oh, good. Now he's going a bit too fast, do a half halt, get him thinking about you. And, oh good, now outside rein, outside leg, outside rein, outside leg. And what's really going on here is that horse wants to go to his place of rest. Okay, and that place of rest would be over here where the gate is. So on this side, the horse is trying to lean his shoulder in and the instructor's having the person pick up their inside rein, inside leg. When you get about here, the gate's in front of the horse, it's wanting to go fast to get there, like half halt, half halt, slow down, slow down. As you come around this corner, the horse is trying to run its shoulder out like that. And you've got to use outside leg, outside rein to stop him from doing that. And then when the gate gets directly behind the horse, <clears throat> now he doesn't want to go. Whereas if you, you know, in order to fix that, you know, horses don't learn from pressure, they learn from release of pressure. And in order to get a horse to where he wouldn't want to go over there, you'd actually have to allow him to go over there. Because right now, this horse thinks over there would be the holy grail. I'd feel really good when I got there. And the more inside rein, inside leg, outside rein, outside leg, half halt, kick him forward, whatever you do over here, only cements in his mind more. I know when I get done with this lesson, I'm going to go over to that gate there and you're going to get off. And so for me, I would rather fix the cause because if you think about every correction being made in this, this imaginary lesson here, the falling the shoulder in and trying to stand that up there, the going too fast on this side of the circle and trying to slow that down, 
the leaning the shoulder out on this side of the circle and trying to stand it up and on this side of the circle when the horse is not going forward enough every single one of those is a symptom of the problem it's not the problem whereas if i was to just turn loose of this horse and say where do you want to go i'm pretty sure he's going to straighten up now see see how much energy he has at the trot right here and he still has energy at the trot 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 and i'm still posting and you see he stopped right there so he is telling me this here is the place where i'd like to rest well when i'm going to do this is comes back to the second principle we looked at was do the opposite if he thinks he wants to rest here i'm going to work him here and i'm going to have him rest somewhere else so depending on how broke your horse is you could come over here and trot small circles you know uh, this one's reasonably broke so i could come out when he came over here i could go okay well i need to work on side passing to the left so i could work on my side pass to the left and then i go i might want to work on my side pass to the right i could do a bit of this i might say hmm i probably need to work on backing in a circle so you could just do a lot of transitions i'm going to try to keep it in a small place right here so that uh, the camera doesn't have to track around too much but you could do a lot of transitions and all i'm doing right now is transitioning from one thing to another i was side passing left i was side passing right now i'm backing in circles i mean i could be cantering around here doing walk trot canter stop back walk trot canter stop back transitions all kinds of transitions but my horse just told me he'd like to be down here i might i might actually do some walk to trot stop back up trot walk stop back up trot walk. you could do anything you wanted to but if if i need to work on this stuff okay this is something i want to work on and i need to work on and he thinks down here is a good idea then i might just come down here and work on it you know this little horse i've been working on teaching him to spin a little bit lately so i might come down here and just start to work a little bit on the basics of teaching a horse to spin but you might notice the whole time he's here there's lots of transitions and there's no rest okay so what i'm going to do now after doing all this work i'm going to turn loose and let him walk up here and see if he turns around and goes back or if he decides so he's thinking about going back and he's thinking about going back and he goes yeah i'd love to go back and so good when we get over here then we might do some more transitions that's great so i'm not i'm not punishing for being here remember in the in the very very first episode and i talked about the making the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy and it was with this horse right here and it was with hosing his, his hosing his head and i said a lot of times with the whole principle of making the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy you were not going to make it hard as in any make it any harder than you normally would you were just going to wait for him to change his mind about something and then not do it it's almost like the rest so this is not like it's not like oh i'd never do transitions like this on this horse that's probably what if you think about the little lesson i just imagined up there this is basically what that lesson was supposed to be it was supposed to be a constructive lesson like this and we're supposed to be doing upward and downward transitions but instead of working on our upward and downward transitions we were working on half halt he's going too fast or tapping with a whip he's going too slow or outside rein inside outside leg he's leaning out or inside rein inside leg he's leaning in and we didn't get to do transitions up there because this horse's attraction to the gate and this other horse that i have conveniently tied here that he lives in a pasture with this horse's attraction to this was getting in the way so now so what you want to do is if your horse wants to be so, if you want to do something with your horse and your horse wants to be a certain place you can you can both be happy you let your horse go there and when he gets there then you work on what you wanted to work on anyway so right now i'm going to try it again i'm going to go okay so you want to go over there i'm going to offer you this over here what do you want to do now now last time he got here and curved around and went back didn't he 
what's he doing right now he's curved around but is he going to go back or is he going to go why would i want to go over there he thought about going back and as soon as he looked over there he went hang on now that's where all the work occurs you can see right here with my horse bundy here right there he just showed you that horses are very 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 observant of where they have to work and where they don't have to work and I so we're aware now that horses are always going to be attracted to the place where they're going to rest and in most cases they get to rest when they go out the gate so they're usually attracted to the gate you know your horse is making those calculations all the time even if the rider isn't aware that the horse is making those calculations i guarantee you they are and i'm here in arizona at my friend tamara barrett's place and she trains hunter jumper horses and and she was telling me that all jumping trainers are very aware that the jumps towards the gate the horses will want to rush and the jumps away from the gate the horses will want to shorten up so the trainers are aware of it i don't think a lot of them actually work on getting rid of the gate like i do so they don't so much they don't choose where they work and choose where they rest but the horses still know where they work and where they rest so we'll show you an exercise right here that um, you know kind of shows you that the, the, the jumping trainers are aware that those horses are really wanting to go to that gate so uh, Tamara this horse comes around this line now you've got these jumps spaced like this for what reason they're spaced this way so that the line going away from the gate is set more forward and the line going towards the gate is set more steady or short okay so this one lets them get a bit more forward and this one makes them slow down a little bit correct okay and that's a pretty standard thing in jumping horses and the hunter jumpers yes yeah so that's pretty standard everybody the jumping trainers all realize that, that gate is an attraction but Tamara has figured out like me that you can actually combat it and I'll show you how the smart thing that Tamara's done down here so these jumping horses are all quite big and most people use a mounting block to get on so and a lot of times to get off so what Tamara has done is she has placed the mounting block on the opposite end of the arena from the gate and so if anybody uses that mounting block to get off to end their session they have to ride completely away from the gate and get off there okay a lot of times the mounting blocks by the gate and every time you go to the gate and get off your horse you are confirming your to your horse that that gate's the holy grail and that's the place the session ends the other thing Tamara has done that's really smart if you have a look on the fence over here there's a blue uh, it's a blue grain feeder hooked on the fence right there it's really hot here in Arizona most of the year and everybody brings at least a couple of bottles of water to drink while they're riding and when they get thirsty they want to go and rest their horse and have a drink well Tamara has placed there's one here and there's one on this other fence over here that she's placed them on this end of the arena so she's got those people if they want to get a drink of water they have to rest their horse in a place they probably wouldn't necessarily think of resting them so you know Tamara's getting the riders to train their horses without even knowing they're training their horses Sometimes if you're unaware of this desire for horses to have a resting place as well as, you know, as much rest as there is work, and that's that whole don't go to bed angry thing, um, it can come out as what appears to be spooking. And I had a, I did a clinic one time and uh, there was a lady and she's a dressage rider and the first day at the clinic her horse wanted to be over by the gate quite a bit and so we did all our work there. Anyway, the next day I showed up and she'd... Uh, the place where the clinic was that's where she actually keeps her horses and so she went out to the uh, outside dressage arena she normally rides in early in the morning and rode a horse and by the time I got there she came over and she said you know what you fixed my spooking problem yesterday and I said what she goes well I've got this spooking problem she said see that arena over there whenever I ride down the fence see the, on that that side over there she said whenever I ride down that fence See that blue barrel down the end? My horse comes down here. There was a, the blue barrel was outside the fence, but I've set it here just to give an example. My horse comes about here and then <laughs> spooks at that barrel and runs off. And he's been doing that for the last nine months and I cannot get him past that barrel. And I said, oh, okay, so, but you fixed it and she says, yeah, well normally, you know, I'm a dressage rider, so I want my horse to do this. So I normally get on and I start to ride around the rail. Well, today I got on and I kind of said, where do you think the resting place is? And she said, my horse went straight over to the gate and the gate was down on the end here. She said, my horse went over to the gate. So I did all my work down there. I was trotting 20 meter circles. So they were up against this corner right here. She said, I even cantered 20 meter circles and I worked on my canter down here in this corner 
Okay, and that's all I did. I worked on that, worked on that, worked on that, just like I normally would. I did the same work I would normally do, 20 meter circles, except instead of putting them where I normally put them, I put them right over here in this corner. And she said, and then what I did was, when I wanted to have a rest, I turned loose and let my horse walk. And I didn't really care where he went, and I wasn't, a, I wasn't attempting to fix the blue barrel problem, I just wanted to see where he walked. And she said, my horse walked down here, and I looked up and saw the blue barrel coming and thought, oh my goodness, the blue barrel's coming, he's gonna spook it again, but I'll just, I'll let him, I'll just let him go and see what he wants to do. And she said her horse kept walking, and she kept, and she said, and I know the blue barrel's gonna get me. He, it always gets me. This horse always spooks at this blue barrel. And she got down here, and she got closer, and closer, and, the, and like I said before, the barrel was on the outside of the arena. But he got closer, and closer, and her horse went like this. Sidestepped around the barrel about that much and kept walking. And she said right then, I realized that all of that spook and turn and run back there, it was 5% push from the barrel. 5% spook, and it was 95% my horse wants to rest down there by the gate. My horse wants to go home and have a rest. And she said, and as soon as I got rid of the, the I changed the, you know, where that horse thought would be a good resting place, as soon as I changed that, my spook went away. So sometimes, um, you know, it's just like I explained at the beginning with the trail riding. People think the the wanting to rush home on the trail is the problem. You know, they want to get a bigger bit or they want to do all sorts of work out on the trail so the horse doesn't speed up. But really, let's, let's say your horse is trying to speed up coming home. And a lot of people would go, well, if you can just, uh, you know, like redirect them in small circles and stuff, it'll, it'll help them not go so fast. Yes, it might help them make it hard to go fast, but I guarantee you when you get home, what are you going to do? You're going to get off and you're going to put them away, which is what caused the whole trail problem in the first place. I've been presenting at a lot of horse expos around the world in the last few years, New Zealand, Australia, uh, Canada, and here in the US. And I was in Massachusetts last year and at one, and I was, I was going to do a demo, but I walked past an arena where a, a barrel racer, I think it was Sharon Camarillo, she's a famous barrel racer, was doing a clinic. And I always love to, at those horse expos, I love to go around and watch other people because I'll watch it for a minute and think, oh yeah, that fits in with that principle. I'll learn a technique, sure, but it will fit in with the principle. And the whole giving that horse a place to rest uh, principle, I, was walk, I walked past the arena and I walked from one end to the other to just get to do my demonstration. And in that time, I learned something about bow racing that follows that, that resting place principle. And so what Sharon had, uh, she had a horse and she was just trotting around the barrels. And so she, let, let's say this is the first barrel over here. She came trotting in, she trotted around the first barrel then she trotted around the second one, then she went up and she trotted around the third one, and then she came trotting back down here, and then instead of resting there, she trotted around in a half circle and trotted back up towards the first barrel. Now, if you think about it in barrel racing, your first barrel is probably your hardest barrel because you come running out of that alleyway, that's probably the most speed, most run up you have getting to any barrel is running to that first one. And so that's where they've got to be able to run up to that barrel and run all the way up but when they get there really right and slow down on their hind end and not get all uptight about it and so what Sharon did was like I said she trotted around that one around that one around the last one trotted down here turned around trotted up to this first barrel trotted up sat stopped backed up and then she said good now let your horse rest there so it would really give that horse a reason to think this first barrel was a good place and not a bad place. So when, when, when she chose to rest, she chose to rest right here by this first barrel. So hopefully that gives you some insight into the principle of choose where you work and choose where you rest. Be sure to join us next time and we'll talk about another principle of training.